Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you a Nacqua switch SKS A3008T from Shika Store. So in this video, I'm gonna have a three parts. The first, I will give you a really quick introduction, and then we will jump straight into unboxing. Second, we will open it up and check the motherboard and chips inside. And finally, I will walk you through the management UI so you can see what it can do. Also, through this video, you will see some um, clips from my colleagues. His job is testing like a uh, noise level, power consumption, yeah, just to give you more uh, complete picture. So let's get started. By the way, if you run into any issue after buying, please feel free always reach out the customer service team uh, on your platform. So A3008T come with, uh, comes with 8 10 gigabit ports and one console port. They support 1G, 2.5G, 5G and 10 gigabit. This is a fully managed switch. So here are some specific details. It has a 160 GPP, which is more than enough for all 8 10G ports to run at four duplex without any issues. And the packet forwarding rate is 119 Mbps. For layer two features, it supports Mac address table, VLAN support management, security features, and service features like ACL, QoS, and it also has some layer three capabilities. Yeah, but I will go into all of details here. So if you want, feel free to pause the video to check out. Alright, let's start unboxing. On the lower left corner of the box, you can already see some of the key features list. Support for layer 3 web management, 10 gigabit high speed RG45 ports, active cooling with a fan, and the link aggregation. If you want to know more, look at the back. So now let's quickly check what's inside the box. Okay. Um, you get four 3M adhesive foot pads. Uh, you can stick them on if you're setting up as a Dexter switch. Here's also a USB to console RG45 cable, which is a nice touch. Definitely what you'd expect from an enterprise grid switch. The power adapter, 12 volts for a Yeah, I think we will test the full power consumption after with all eight ports running. The switch itself weighs about one kilogram and the sides are around 20.7 centimeters long, 13.5 centimeter wide and 3.5 centimeter thick. On the front, there are eight to 14 gigabits RG45 ports, plus a console management port, a DC power input, system and power indicator lights, and a recite button around the back there's a grounding scroll terminal. It looks actually pretty solid. And there are large ventilation holes on both sides. Um, if you look closely, yeah, you can already spot the uh, cooling fan inside. Anyway, we will take it apart later. And my colleagues will test the fan noise level. On the bottom, you will find spots for sticking the foot pads and two scroll holes if you want to wall mount it. And here also SN code. Now let's open it. First, remove the six scroll, two on each side and two at the back. Then gently lift the top cover. Be careful though, don't put too hot because there's a fan cable attached to the lead. Next, unscrew the fan. The fan is made by this brand. This is a 12 volt PWM4Y lower fan. We will test the fan noise in a bit. Look inside, the PCB takes up most of the space inside of the switch. There's a large heat scale and the fan blows air across it from one side to the other side to efficiently remove heat from the heat skin. Now let's go a bit deeper and remove the motherboard to check out the back side. You will see eight PHY chips line up neatly with supporting circuitry for each port super clean layout the area a little lower in the center holds the supporting complement for the switch soc and over the bottom left corner power delivery circuitry on the front side the magnetic modes for the eight 10 gb ports are also lined up really nicely it looks very high quality for memory it uses a 512 mb ddr3 chip from esmt Next to it, there's a 32MB SPI flash chip from Giga device. The 8 to 10 gigabit PHY chips are Realtek, and the main switch chip is the enterprise grade Realtek RTL9303. When there's no load, the power supply basically uses 0 watts. The idle voltage is 12 volts, and it stays nice and stable, no weird jumping around. When you power it on, 
it pulls about 8 to 9 watts. After it boots up and stabilizes, with no cables plugged in, it sits at around 9.6 watts in standby. In a quiet room, around 30 decibels. We test the fan noise really close to the fan side, it's about 48. If you use it as deck table switch and sit about 30 centimeters away, it's roughly 39. We added about 12 decibel gain in the mic to simulate what it sounds like close to your ear. You can hear the fan a bit, but compared to 60 to 70 in a sub rock, it's way quieter. Now let's test the speed between the switch and the PC. It grabs an IP via DHCP just fine. We tried uploading and downloading use SOT. And yes, it has 4 10 gigabit speed. Even with the multi thread test, we got about 9.4 gigabits. No problem. Now let's plug in all 8 RG45 ports and check power and noise again. Power draw jumps to around 29, so it's totally fine even when all 10 gigabit ports are fully loaded. Noise goes up a little to about 50 decibels. And we also checked the temperature. The top of the case is about 32. And unlike some switch that get hot at the bottom, this one has almost the same temp on both sides. Pretty well balanced cooling. And this switch also has an option with a Rock S, but because the unit is pretty compact, it's mainly used and be designed as a desk switch. So that's the reason why it doesn't come with an option with a um, rock ear as default. If you are planning to mount it in a rock, you might need to buy the ears separately. There are three mounting holes on both sides. Alright, let's move into the management interface. So first, you will need to set your computer's IP address to the same subnet as the switch, something like 192.168.10.x. And open your Google and type into 192.168.10.12. Change the language in English, click Login and you will be taken to the main management page. Here you can see the basic mode inform and the current firmware version. Okay, in the port inform session, you can see the um, current link speed for the each port. This mode supports 5G speed too. And you can also find basic and detailed port statistics here. I will quickly walk you through the different buttons and menus. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and we will see you in next video. Bye bye!